Let's use Teensy 3.6 to create an audio reverb effect and see how that works. I'm going to be using the Freeverb module out of the effects in this Teensy Audio Design GUI tool, even though there's also Reverb, and then there's just a stereo version of Freeverb. This regular Reverb, I couldn't really get it to work. I may have done something wrong. It says here you may get distortion issues if the input signal to this Reverb module is greater than 0.5. I thought I had it less than 0.5. I may have been wrong, but I was getting all kinds of weird distortion and clipping. Maybe I'll look at it in the future, but for now I'm just going to use Freeverb, and it has more options anyway. So I'm using the I2S board for audio in and out. I've done other videos using things like analog ADC in and DAC out. You can refer to those other videos if you don't want to use this kind of an audio shield. But this is the basic setup where I'm taking the audio in, I'm sending it into this reverb unit and bringing it to a mixer so it can go out to another amplifier plugged into the line out on this board. And at the same time, I'm taking the original non-reverb audio and also putting that in the mixer. And I can control the volume on the original signal to control how much it blends with the reverb copy. And we can have control over the way the effect is applied. We also bring in this control unit from down in the control section of the GUI, and that allows us to enable the audio shield and control volume and things like that. And once we are done, if we export, we bring this into the Arduino sketch as usual and write some code to control all of this. So let's look at the wiring diagram of the physical circuit. The Teensy module will be docked onto the audio shield, not a breadboard, but this is just to wire up the potentiometers. So I'm taking ground and 3.3 volts from Teensy to go to the pots, and each pot goes to a different analog input, so I can control the room size and damping of the reverb module and the volume of the original signal without reverb on it going to the mixer. So Teensy docks onto the audio board, and we have line in and line out on these header pins here. And those potentiometers control the room size, the damping, and the gain on this mixer channel. So we send audio in, it goes down to Teensy, gets processed, comes back out, and goes to an amplifier. When this is set up the way we want, and we export and take all of this stuff, which represents all this wiring and which modules we're using. We take that into Arduino. Here's the main information from the design GUI saying what we're using, how we've wired up the inputs and outputs. Then we do our regular sketch to control everything. So these are the analog inputs for the three potentiometers to control the reverb and the original signals level. We always need audio memory blocks and we assign it 10 and it turns out we only need six because down in the bottom of the sketch, I'm always printing out the maximum number of audio memory blocks we've ever used while the sketch was running. It turns out it's six, but we don't need any other audio memory blocks in this code to do other processes. So it's okay to just use 10, keep it at that. And we initialize the audio shield and then we just go to the main loop. And with everything initialized and wired up according to all of the initial stuff here, any audio coming into the audio board is going to get processed by the reverb. And all we're doing in our loop is reading in the three potentiometers, then controlling the gain on the one original audio signal and the reverb parameters on the reverb unit and printing out on the serial monitor for reference what those settings are on the pot. So we're just getting an ongoing reverb effect and we can control it. So let's see how this sounds. I forgot to actually turn on the camera. So I have a screen capture and I have audio, but there's no live video of me turning the knobs and playing and pausing the audio on the MP3 player. So I'll do a very quick demo right now.
looking at the serial monitor, we can see the reverb effects like damping, room size, and the level of the original dry signal, as well as how many audio blocks we've ever used while running the sketch. So it looks like this only uses six audio blocks, even though we assigned 10, but now we know if we want to optimize that later, we can set it to six. The potentiometer settings will be continually updating in the serial monitor so we can keep an eye on what we're doing and hear the impact. Starting out with a minimum room size, meaning there's not much reverb, if any, and minimal damping, which means we're getting as wide open a signal as possible, we have the dry, unaffected signal at 50%, so we'll hear what the original music sounds like. So when I pause, it just really pauses with minimal reverb. And now let's increase the room size so we get some reverb. Put it around 30%. Now there's a little reverb after effect when we pause. But let's turn it up all the way just to see how exaggerated it can get. I'll just do that while it's playing and then I'll pause. Now when I pause it really goes on for a long time. So while the reverb itself is exaggerated, if we turn up the damping, we can see if that is a bit obvious what it does. It basically takes away some of the high-end frequencies, which makes it sound a little less overbearing and bitey, and it drowns out a little sooner and is more tight under control. Because with the upper end sounding filtered, there's less to reverberate. It's still a strong reverberation, but it's just more under control if we want a lot of reverb. And if I take away the damping again and just let it go all wide open, it takes a longer time again to decay. Bring back the damping, and it doesn't take as long and it sounds a little cleaner. Putting the damping and the room size about halfway, it's a moderate reverb. Turning it all back off again just to hear the original. So bringing back some reverb and damping, if we add a lot more of the original signal and have a little bit of reverb and a lot of reverb, maybe it sounds a little more natural because we have some ongoing reverb and when we pause the music we still hear reverb prominently, but it's everything's not all washed out by reverb dominating as an effect. So having some of the original dry signal mixed in with the wet signal gives us more options. Now if we take away the dry signal altogether and just have the reverb. It just kind of sounds like more of a background effect and we're missing the body of the music. So it's kind of like we're listening to music from a different room and we can only hear what stands out that's not attenuated by the walls or whatever. So let's add back in some of the original while it's playing.
Well, that's how the free verb reverb unit sounds in Teensy. Hopefully this quick demo gives you some insight into how Teensy can sound when doing reverb effects. If you want to see more Teensy effects, check out other videos I've made on the topic. And if there's something else you'd like to see me try to accomplish that I haven't done yet, leave a comment below. See you on the next video.